Oh my god, that is so much thermal paste. Oh god, it's like a... It looks like a... Today we've got another Dell product to review. This is the Dell RTX 3090. So being a higher end device, sort of made by an OEM, makes it an interesting thing to look at because Dell, as we know from the G5 5000, never cuts corners. So we're going to be looking at this. This is a 3090 sent in to us by a viewer named Michael. Not to be confused with Michael Dell. I don't think he would send us anything at this point. And we're going to look at the thermals, the build quality, the acoustics, and more, just to see how Dell did with this thing. And as a spoiler, actually came out a lot better than we expected. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So talking about an OEM video card is always a little bit weird because there's no technical price on this. Other than at this point your soul for a video card, but we would all trade our souls for things. Some of us have higher prices than others. Some people would trade for a video card and at this point I would, I would take this cookie for my soul, frankly. And uh, I, think we'll, I think we'll do that right now. But if your soul is worth one Alienware computer, that's what you can get this in. That's what our viewer Michael got the RTX 3090 in. Now he took this card out and put it in his own system, which is probably a wise decision. We have a review of an Alienware R10 coming up and you'll see why that was a wise decision. But as a card itself, we were curious if you bought this on something like eBay from a secondhand seller, scalper, whatever, would it actually be any good outside of the system that it came in originally? The card itself is relatively small for a 3090. 3090s have memory on the back and the front, which makes them very difficult to cool for a lot of the coolers on the market, including the four slot coolers from the likes of board partners like Gigabyte. We've had a lot of trouble with those where they're just not designed well enough to sink heat off the memory on the back of the card. So that makes this particularly challenging to design for, especially if you're an OEM. Presumably Dell is working with some major other manufacturer to help design the card. But if you're an OEM who doesn't make tons of designs all the time for video cards, you don't necessarily have the experience to make something that will deal with the heat load of a 3090. And that's why this one was interesting. A quick note before we get into the teardown and the review of this as a standalone device, a couple things. First of all, we recently looked at a few Dell devices. We looked at the Dell G5 5000, which we called uh, e-waste with a warranty, well, a warranty with e-waste attached to it is maybe more appropriate for the G5 5000. We also looked at the video card that was in the G5 5000, and it was not well done. The Well, I guess in that in that case, the memory was well done, as in it was, it was cooked extremely well at about 110 degrees Celsius. And then we looked at the Dell power supply that was in the G5 5000, and that was surprisingly good. It was actually very efficient and it was a collaboration with LightOn to make the power supply. So Dell is capable of doing things very well. It definitely has engineers or works with engineers at third parties who are capable of doing things very well. It's just a matter of if those engineers or those teams worked on the product that you bought or you're, in our case you're reviewing. So the point of this then is to see if this can be like another Dell power supply as opposed to another Dell GTX 1660 Super because that would be sad and we would be very sad for our viewer Michael. But let's take a look at it. We'll do a teardown. The teardown was done after the testing. We'll show the testing in the video second, though, and look at thermals, acoustics, frequency, and more to see if the Dell version of the RTX 3090 is any good. Just doing a walk around externally first, uh, and we are working on our mod mat. If you want to grab one of these, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our work services. So uh, it's a plastic shroud. It does not extend down extremely far, which is a good thing. This is actually something Dell's done competently here, where uh, a lot of the companies, including the big video card partners, will run these shrouds down past the fins, so you end up blocking most of the exhaust for the fans. So the fans push the air in, and then it has nowhere to go because the plastics come down and covers a large part of the fin stack. So this is, this is a good aspect of the design. Dell's not really blocking any of the exhaust from the fin stack. So, that's, that's one of the elements we thought was better than expected. Same goes for the bottom, by the way. Now, two fans, obviously, for this one. The 
heat pipe solution, it looks like there's four that we can see right now. There might be more once we open it up. And those look to be maybe six mil heat pipes. This is definitely a base plate, and it's got the OEM support uh, threads. So OEMs can secure these to a case by using a bar, normally a metal bar, to prevent GPU sag. This, I can't tell from here if this is plastic or metal. We'll figure that out once we open it. It feels, feels like plastic, but might just be the paint. Anyway, that's going to be a base plate. And uh, we've got a back plate. So since this is a 3090, it has memory modules on the back. We've got those here, 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 and here. And memory modules on the backside of the 3090s have been actually one of the pain points for NVIDIA. It's very hard for them to deal with the heat. For the I.O., it's perforated, so there's a bit of room to exhaust there. And then they're also taking the flow-through pattern that NVIDIA was pushing for this generation. Again, this is not a new concept. Uh, it's just something NVIDIA made. NVIDIA made it seem like it's new, but Sapphire and plenty of others have done it forever. Basically, the PCB stops about here. And terminating the PCB early, since there's no use for the rest of the space, means that they can push the air through the card, through the heatsink, and out the back, rather than bouncing it off of a back plate. OK, time to get into the teardown. So we're going to grab some tools. Actually, we're going to start with just the four for the GPU. It's actually a, not a tamper seal on this. It's kind of interesting. And then we're going to track the screws on our mod mat. Okay, we're going to see if this separates or if I need to take out the rest of them. Nope, yep, okay. Not a lot holding that cooler in place. Okay, so these are all the same type of screw. It's one of the things we like to look for is if they change screw types at all. There's actually two more screws under this plate going into the heat sink. That's kind of annoying. So we're going to have to take this plate off first. A little bit non-standard. That's not how they're normally done. Oh, hey, there's a heat pipe. That is more effort than I expected. Wow. All right. Well, so Dell isn't a total meme of a company when it comes to building parts. That is interesting. Uh, how much these heat pipes help, we don't have a lot of great data on. We've tested them one off in the past in A-B tests. And they can be beneficial, like on some of the EVGA, KP type cards, the MSI Lightning type cards. But basically the whole point of it, let's see where it's routed. Uh, the point of this heat pipe is it, it works as any other heat pipe does. It's flat. Flat ones are less efficient thermally than the round heat pipes, but they get more surface area contact. And then obviously you can get a lower profile. So there's benefits to them. And there's a reason to use them. But uh, you're going to have an evaporator and a condenser, just like any other heat pipe. And what this is doing is contacting just above the memory up here. So at the top of the card, the heat pipe's running sort of north of that almost. And that means is we don't have the heat pipe going over the memory, but it's going next to it over here. And actually, right where about the, is that the inductors? Right where the inductors, the through holes are coming through for the inductors and the MOSFETs. Those might be the inductors need to look. But that'll be beneficial to have the heat pipe there. And then it's running over to this side where it's not going to have much heat to deal with. So you got to have a cool side somewhere. As far as putting in more effort than we would have expected, they've got the thermal pads here. And then they have thermal pads on half of these memory modules with a larger, taller thermal pad here. This actually, to me, looks like a mistake. Like Someone sized it all up and then, actually, you can see it on, I'll show this in a minute too. Someone sized it up and didn't, didn't really manufacture it correctly or test it or something, but uh, we're only covering part of the memory with this. And so what they had to do is get a tall module uh, or a tall thermal pad here to then come down to the memory and cool the other half of it. And they've actually got a gap right down the center where there's no coverage. So it could be done better, but it is sadly done better than some of the like four slot cards we've seen from partners. I don't know if that's more commentary on the others or on Dell, but they, they have actually uh, put a little bit of thought into it despite it looks like having sort of a mistake where this, this should be wider, ideally. Um, but maybe for some other sizing reason, like for clearance of the through hole components, maybe they did it this way. As for this, it's the same thing where it's probably hard to see on camera, but this side that I'm pointing to 
is less indented than the other side because it's not really contacting anything. So that, that also could have been done better. Uh, basically towards the inner part of the module, there's not a lot of contact, but they've got it mostly centrally and then at the outer edge, except for this one, not, not much centrally there. Just for sake of having it, in case we need to replace any of these for our viewer or in case anyone needs it, these are fairly standard video card memory thermal pads, but so that's going to be about a 1.5 mil. It's like 2.5 or so, depending on how much you squish it down. That's kind of a fat thermal pad. 2.5s are, are difficult to find. That's what we had to take out. These ones are backplate screws. These are obviously the four spring tension screws holding the heatsink to the GPU. And we've got two here going through the base plate, under the back plate, into the aluminum fin stack. Oh my God, that is so much thermal paste. Oh God, it's like a, it looks like a horror movie. So like, I think we're, can we get, hey Keegan, can we get a uh, Gaussian blur on this? I don't want to get demonetized for gore. That is so much, it's not a bad thing. It's just sort of comical. Thermal paste, as stated, uh, it's not a bad thing to have too much. It's just gonna squish out like it did. It's just funny to see sometimes when it's not me who does this, because normally it's me who does this. But they've got an interesting solution for this, actually. This this is, you know, Dell, uh, if you put this much effort into everything, I wouldn't be able to make as many jokes about you. <laughs> this is a vapor chamber, so they've got a vapor chamber mixed with a standard cold plate mixed with heat pipes and then a fin stack. And vapor chamber, you can see right there, that's the termination point of the vapor chamber. And uh, we've actually shown these getting made in Cooler Master's factory in the past. The sort of thing to know about it is these divots, you can just barely see right here, these impression marks. Those, uh, we'll call them dimples, I guess, have a, a copper stack of cylinders on the other side of them. And so that adds surface area. You've got a vapor chamber where it's vapor inside of it, and it's mostly hollow, except for where these points are, where there's a little bit of structural benefit to that, but mostly it's for surface area. It creates a tower of stacked cylinders. The fin stack is aluminum, uh, but these heat pipes are nickel-plated copper. Let's measure those. I think I was actually wrong. Those look like eight mil heat pipes, not six. From the outside, I thought there were six. That is, in fact, an eight mil heat pipe, though. So that is one of the larger ones. And what you're looking for with heat pipes is that they cross something hot directly. So what you typically would want to see with a, a non-vapor chamber heat pipe only design is them crossing the silicon and getting as much coverage on the silicon component as possible. So you would want to see, let's say, you know, four of them maybe cover it completely. That would be great. Whereas if you have like say six, six mil ones, you might have a quarter of a heat pipe on the ends contacting it, which isn't as efficient. So that's what you're looking for. And what they have here is these two doing most of the work for this part of the die, this doing most of the work for the top, and this bottom one's not doing a whole lot for the silicon, for the GPU, but it is going to help a little bit with this memory contact. The takeaway so far, we'll look at thermals in a bit, but is that Dell has done a lot with the physical real estate that they've used. It's not a four slot card, but they're combining a lot of different approaches to cooling that in theory should stack well together. So now I'm gonna disconnect the base plate. This is gonna be like two things in a row that Dell's done not horribly. Something seems wrong. I must be doing something wrong. So they've put in some fins to help a little bit with the MOSFETs. Actually very good um, memory coverage with the thermal pads. There is an NV-Link bridge here, but it's non-standard, so you're gonna have to connect with another Dell card. So it's a PowerLogic fan. They make a lot of the, the components for like EVGA and the other, and ASUS, everyone else. PLA09215B12H, if you need to replace it. Okay, I think that's it for the teardown. So now we can move on to some of the pressure testing or thermals, whatever other benchmarks we have for this, this content piece. Time to get into some benchmarks. As a reminder, we ran all these tests prior to that disassembly, so the results are unaffected by the teardown. 
and a sustained thermal load for about 50 minutes, the Dell RTX 3090 ramped GPU temperature to about 70 degrees Celsius. This is seemingly the vBIOS temperature target at this point. That's what the vBIOS is telling the card to sustain, so it'll adjust the fan speeds based on that. It then held steady state at this temperature for the duration of the test. The hotspot temperature measured at about 81 degrees, so that's not a bad result for hotspots, a 10 degree delta, which would be wide in some components, but not for GPUs. This is on the better side of average in terms of a core to hotspot delta for a GPU. Finally, for memory temperature of the modules we measured, we observed a maximum of about 90 degrees Celsius. This is far better than we expected for the Dell GPU and is sadly better than some of the four slot GPUs we've tested recently, like from Gigabyte. It's still too hot to shove into the Alienware hotbox, but for our viewer who just wanted the card and pulled it out and put it into something actually good, it'll work fine. Dell's fan RPM gets plotted now and it's shown for the same test sequence. The fan ramps immediately to about 1900 RPM when the load hits, with more hysteresis in play as it slowly climbs from 1900 to 2200 RPM over a period of, at that point, about 500 seconds. Both fans follow the exact same curve on this one. They are in lockstep, and the rest of the range is about 2150 to 2200 RPM once at steady state for the rest of the test. This next chart has an intentionally zoomed vertical axis to help see differences. We're looking at the frequency response on the Dell GPU first, where we see an initial ramp to 1980 megahertz and then a fall off to about 1860 to 1880 megahertz. This fluctuation is normal, but the loss of 100 megahertz isn't necessarily normal. That's a result of two things. First is heat ramp and running cooler would extract more frequency out of the GPU, while the second is the power budget, which is about maybe 10 watts lower than an FE card. Plotting the original RTX 3090 FE card, we see its resting frequency at steady state is closer to 1935 megahertz allowing it a lead of about 55 to 75 megahertz over the Dell 3090. With our previous fan range of about 2150 to 2200 RPM under load, the card ends up operating at about 41.9 to 45.8 dBA at 20 inches distance in our standardized testing methodology. That has it louder than the average RTX 30 series card in general in our testing, most of which are at or below 40 dBA in this testing approach. The Dell card is capable of maintaining those more reasonable thermals that we saw earlier because of its louder nature. And that's also why it can run a thinner card than some of the partner models. It's louder. There are trade-offs for size reduction, and that's clearly noise. It's not new, though. The Dell GPU also has a louder maximum operating noise than almost every other card we've tested recently. Most stop at around 58 to 60 dBA, but Dell ramped to 4190 RPM and 64 dBA, which is absolutely insane. You could hear it through basically the building. Fortunately, this RPM and noise level should never be encountered naturally and should only really happen when manually forcing the RPM this high. So that's it for this card. Now, the card itself actually did surprise us because as far as 3090s go, it's relatively thin. It's not two slot. Technically, it's like two and a half, bordering three, two and a half, I think. Uh, but it's also not a four slot card. And we've seen a lot of four slot cards that are shockingly bad. <sighs> the Gigabyte... Extreme, for example, was basically not cooling memory, despite being as many slots as most motherboards have. So the Dell card, in that sense, surprised us. And it did pretty well. And the only real big downside here is if you leave it in the system it came in. We have the Alienware box. It does not cool well. We'll talk about that later. And uh, that's because it's mostly plastic appendages strapped to a small metal chassis. Uh, made to look like something different, but in reality, it's just not a well-cooled case. And so shoving a 3090, which is relatively high heat load, you're in the, the range of 330 or so watts, 350 watts at the high end, shoving that in there is just not going to be that easy to cool. And our testing was not done in the Alienware case because that's we don't standardize for an Alienware case because it's not standard. So as a card, if you take it out of the Alienware box and put it in something actually well-built, then uh, it seems not bad. So Dell gets another, like not bad, it's almost like they get the, their own It's Better Than Dell Award, except for a Dell product. Uh, Dell's a confusing company right now, but the power supply performed fairly well. The biggest downside was that it's a very strange, it's not really a form factor, because it's not quite TFX, definitely not ATX, not ATX 12VO, but it's 12 volts only. So whatever it is, it's a strange thing, but it did well, uh, and this 3090 does relatively well. In terms of things to 
maybe highlight the heat pipe in the back plate was a lot more than we were expecting. And those do work, it depends how they're implemented, but in this instance, it appears to be helping. Uh, flow through design helps out, especially because they're using a heat pipe to sink the heat into the back plate. And so as you shove air through the back plate, which is possible because of flow through, which again, is not like a special thing, but Nvidia made a big deal out of it this time. Uh, since you can push air through there though, it's actually possible to dissipate heat off of the back plate without relying on other system fans that are nearby or in close proximity. So it works pretty well. And the memory runs at about 90 or so C in our testing in about a 21 degree Celsius environment, ambient. The temperature of the memory does not dictate fan speeds in basically any of these devices. Uh, instead, it's the GPU core that does. So you always run into the problem if the core is cool, but the memory is not, you have this imbalance where the fans don't ramp because the core is cool, so they don't think they need to ramp. The BIOS isn't telling them to ramp, uh, but the memory runs hot. And in this instance, the balance is struck in a fashion that works out for, for the Dell components. As far as gaming and production performance, all that stuff, it's basically gonna be the same as a 3090. You can check our 3090 review to see how that is. Just a reminder, in most instances, we don't recommend a 3090, but there are scenarios where it makes sense. For example, uh, for 3D animation and any kind of 3D artwork. So Andrew on our team works with Unreal Engine and Blender a lot. Recently, we published this video over on Patreon, patreon.com slash gamersnexus, where you can see behind the scenes of Andrew making some of the RAM timings series animations in Unreal Engine. And the work he does in Unreal Engine and Blender, it really does leverage the VRAM on a 3090. So for people like him, in a business environment like this, it starts to make a lot of sense. For gamers, we still don't recommend a 3090. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, it's a waste of your money. But if you have a specific use case for it, sure, go for it. Just check our other video on the 3090 for that. That's not really the point of this today. The point was to look at the Dell card specifically. Dell has passed the test for this one, at least as far as what we've tested on it. And uh, that's, that's, it's better than we expected. So. Uh, that was good to see. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to pick up one of these shirts or a mouse mats, which are in stock and shipping now, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like the behind the scenes video on the RAM timings piece that I mentioned a few minutes ago. We've got a, an Unreal Engine walkthrough there. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.